When I was a young warthog, I got my very first Game Boy Advance at the age of 6. While Pokemon wasn't my very first game, it was the second one I received after going to a family friend's house, and then she lent it to me, and I had so much fun playing it, I loved it, I got a Pidgey, I only leveled my Pidgey because I thought, hey, if this thing's just strong, it'll roll everything! It did, until the Elite Four, and then the Ice Champion murdered me with one shot, and my second highest level Pokemon was like level 30, so, uh, I gave up. <laughs> and I bring this up, uh, because I'm actually really guilty. I'm so sorry, Jamie. I forgot, I never gave you back your Pokemon Yellow copy. I know you only lent it to me for a little while, and I know it's been 20 years, but please, you have to forgive me. That aside, as much as I enjoyed Pokemon Yellow, I did not actually play another Pokemon game until late high school. I got Pokemon Ruby, I loved it as well. And then I finally let's play Gen 2. I believe I did Crystal. Hey! Hello everybody! What's going on, buddy? My name's Chris. My name's Chris. My name's Chris and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon Crystal. Super potion, a stupid potion. Oh my god. I didn't play much Pokemon beyond that. But I did try Pokemon Shield. And I hated it. I hated every moment of it. It was horrible. It was boring. It was glitchy. It looked bad. It just, it was so easy. It was too easy, man. And then Legends Arceus. While I did enjoy it a little bit, it still didn't grab me. Now that brings me to Pokemon Violet and Scarlet. I got Violets because I like choosing the unpopular uh, version of the game. Uh, turns out I was wrong and um, Scarlet is way less popular and I should have gotten that one instead. <sighs> I mean, everyone's been talking about this for like two weeks now. The game sucks. This game is more broken than Skyrim. By not just by a little bit, by a multiplied amount. These games are so incredibly broken, but I will admit, they are pretty entertaining, at least most of them. The ones that aren't, of course, are the ones where the frames drop every 10 seconds. For the love of God, when you first enter in your name to start your file, when you hit enter, you get frame drops as soon as it goes into the cutscene for the beginning of the game. Oh, I already saw a frame drop! And it's not that it's unplayable, and yes, it is very annoying, but it is certainly playable. But it just, it's just one of those things that just, it's just a constant reminder of this game is not finished. I really love when indie developers uh, release games in alpha, and then you could like kind of be there to help support them as they grow the game past their alpha stage into a full-fledged game, and it's beautiful, and it's very polished, no glitches. <sighs> Why did AAA companies start doing this? I mean, they're, they're kind of genius for doing this, to be honest, because if you think about it, why not release a half-finished game and then you update it as it goes along? In fact, I've been seeing people attack others on Twitter for getting angry that this game is so unfinished. And it's baffling to me. It makes no sense. The tweets say stuff like, What did you expect on day one? And, come on, man, at least give it an update or two. We should not have to wait for updates, man. That, it, it, there's no way, there's no way the people developing this game were, were doing that like, yep, yeah, looks good to me. And it sucks too, because Nintendo is so well known for their polish and how far they'll put back games in order to make sure they're right. Um, A 3D Mario game hasn't been released in years. Odyssey was the last real 3D Mario game. Breath of the Wild took forever to come out. Metroid Dread took 10 years to come out. But Pokemon Company's like, what? Oh, Legends Arceus came out 10 months ago? Ah, release the next one. And from what I understand, a lot of this is because of like the anime and stuff. But that is a horrible, I mean, it's a reason, all right? It's one I don't agree with though. Can the anime not just go on hiatus? I mean, of course it can't. Because then, then the shareholders don't make all their money. But it just, it's just so gross. It is, it is ugly and it's gross and I feel terrible that I'm giving Pokemon uh, this money. I, I truly hate the fact that I gave them $90. But what actually angers me to no end are the people that buy the game twice and they buy both versions and sometimes even the third version when it comes out of these series. Even when the games were like actually finished and had, I, I wanna say efforts in the technical side of it, I'll say. 
It was still, I don't understand who has that much extra money. When I, when someone tells me they buy like the Pokemon games multiple times, like you better be living in like some nice million dollar house where you just, you just have so much money to just burn away. Uh, especially here in Canada where it's $90 to buy the game, man. Who spent $180 on this? And it's, they're the issue. Well, I mean, they're not only the issue, but they're, they're a massive part of the issue because at least when the games are this horribly made, if you can't help yourself in buying the game, for the love of God, don't buy it twice. Hello? There is no difference between the games besides a di few different Pokemon appear in one or the other. It's not even a significant amount. It's such a small amount of differences. It's gross. So for the love of God, stop buying. Especially, we knew this was coming. We've seen the trailers. We've seen how, like broken it looked why it makes no sense to me these games sold 10 million copies in three days which if you're like me you're like wow that is a huge number but i have absolutely nothing to compare it to so i don't know just how big that number really is well as roger's base puts it to put this in perspective, in three days, Scarlet and Violet have surpassed the lifetime sales of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and the entirety of the Wii U library. And if you scroll down, he actually posts another image, which just goes over Mario Kart 8, the massive Goliath of a game, sold 8.46 million copies in its lifetime. So a part of me has to wonder, at what point do the Pokemon company have to actually respond to this? Will they ever respond to this? Because I see so many people say, why would they when they're selling such record breaking numbers? But like companies respond to giant backlash like this all the time, even though they're making so much money. So will they? Probably not, but maybe they would. I mean, it's been almost two weeks since this game came out. So maybe they won't. But what would it take for the sales to tank? Is that it? Is this company so evil and they care so little that they don't even want to talk about it? And you know, I see people trashing on the devs and I, Moist Critical in his first video of Pokemon Violet and Scarlet, he talked about how the devs are some of the worst in the world. Um, I don't know uh, where he got that source from, um, but I, I, I mean, I would be up to like, sympathize with the fact that they're probably on an absolutely disgustingly tight schedule and they just can't keep up so i think that once again goes back up to the suits and ties either not giving them i mean i don't know if you just throw our bodies at that so i don't know if that's a money issue that they just don't want to spend the money because of that insanely greedy or maybe i'm just wrong maybe they are actually bad devs maybe they scrape these guys up off the sidewalk and <laughs> they just throw them in a room it's like monkeys on typewriters and then eventually a pokemon game comes out and it's nuts because every single day new like game breaking bugs are being found even just today this was discovered uh oh pokemon scarlet violet battle stadium currently is using the same rng seed for every battle this allows us to choose moves to ensure that one hit ko moves such as sheer cold always hit so the RNG doesn't exist, the same thing happens each and every single time. How does something like that get missed? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and assume it probably doesn't, it's just that they just didn't have enough time to do anything about it. But of course the glitches aren't all bad, there's a lot of really funny stuff like the uh, woo guys and this horrible face thing, oh my god that's horrifying. And then there's the classics like clipping through the ground. That stuff's always good. Well, unless you're in the middle of doing something and in which case it sucks. It's good for a little bit, but if it happens enough, then it's really bad. And you know what? I'm gonna give myself an opportunity here to post more glitches. Uh-huh, I don't know when to stop. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. Is this too much? Am I pointing at nothing? But all that set aside, with my long rant of how terrible and god-awful this game is, I'm having so much fun. I am loving this game. It is so much fun. There's no grass encounters anymore. Thank god I hate random encounters. But they kind of still are because there's tall grass still and there's small Pokemon in there. So it's almost like grass encounters, but it's like, oh, now you feel like the dummy for running to the Pokemon you didn't see that's, you know, disguised, camouflaged. 
instead of you just being annoyed at the game for like, oh, you walked two steps, time for another Zubat. It's just so much more fun to actually see the Pokemon walking around, man, finally. We got a bit of that in Sword and Shield, but there's also grass encounters as well. Also, open world. I know so many people are annoyed at open world. I don't care. I love open world. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it works most times. I've personally never played a game where it didn't work. I haven't played that many open world games, however, so I mean, I'm sure they're out there. But I'm really enjoying the open world. Collecting the TMs and then you can build your own. I don't know if that's a new update or not, but like... I think they experimented with that before. Was, was it Arceus that did it first? Anyways, it's, it's that's good. And just there's stuff everywhere. The landscape's a little bit empty, but I gotta say, I kinda like when landscapes are a bit empty in games. It is laziness, I understand, but like, it just feels kinda more real in a way, because, you know, in real life, you don't walk into a forest, there's two trees, and then you're next town, you know? You walk and then you, you, there's a lot of walking where there's nothing going on, so it works for me a little bit, oddly enough. Uh, but I do know that that's more of a laziness thing than anything, but I just like that aesthetic better. And there are some pretty clever ideas, so I'm not far in the game. I've beaten one gym, and I got the first um, giant colossal Pokemon thing. I haven't done a star base yet, but I'm definitely gonna try one of those next. I've also imposed some rules on myself, which I think pr at least has a hand in making this so much more fun to me. Where if I, it's not real Nuzlocke rules, because I'm not good enough at Pokemon to know, I still have no idea what types are effective against what, besides the obvious. I know water hurts fire, I, I get that, but why doesn't electricity hurt steel if it hurts water? It, it's, they're both conduction. Anyways. Uh, but essentially what I'm doing is if a Pokemon dies, I gotta release it. I can only catch one of each type of Pokemon, so I'm not doing one per root or whatever. Um, I can't use items in battle either. Those are really the only restrictions. Oh, and when someone dies, I use an RNG calculator to calculate which Pokemon to take out next, so I do not get to choose. And honestly, I'm playing with Pokemon I never thought I would like at all. I'm playing with a Vavillion or whatever it's called, and it's been with me since the beginning, and it's actually been really effective, surprisingly. It's a bug, and yet it's actually pretty dang decent, at least for me. It's probably not, but it's been working for me. And I haven't really played enough of the game to know, like, how the story is, um, but I did find out thanks to uh, Mr. Ant Dude over here, um, if we could pay attention to his tweet. And uh, Pokemon, you beat Titans to get Herba Mystica plans to give your writing Pokemon some extra skills. Herba Mystica HM. You beat big Pokemon to learn HMs. That's cool. I didn't make that connection. Um, that being said, I didn't even know what a Herba Mystica was until last night when I found the first one. And I had no idea it was going to give me a move, so I didn't really have much time to think about it. But that's very clever. So, like, you know, there's there's some cogs turning for, you know, the, these devs that are, like, doing this stuff. That, that's very clever. That's a very fun way to get HMs. So, yeah, I've come to learn that I have some very complex feelings on this game. This is definitely the worst game I've ever loved. <laughs> and, um, I kind of wish, uh... Nintendo or Pokemon would fix their shit. That'd be really cool if you did that, Pokemon. Please, even if, okay, why don't they just have, what? okay, why can't they just do like the Call of Duty thing where it's like they have one team working on it for the 2020 release and then they have a separate team working on the 2021 release. And then, so there's, there's a two year work cycle instead of 10 months between Arceus and this. 10 months, man, that's way too little time, Scooby-Doo. And that's why Pokemon Violet is the worst game I've ever loved. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, have a Discord if you want to join if you're not part of that. I also stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I do a lot of fun stuff uh, like this. Hello, it is me. It is nice to meet you all. You know who I am, right? That's right, I am Chris's best friend. He talks about all the time, Boris. Okay, bye now. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Jamie, please. If you want to tell me, I just want to get this back to you. I don't even know the contact anymore. <laughs>